Hey, this is Lee Dorian from With The Dead and Rise Above Records. You're tuned to Loud TV. Stay heavy. I didn't know him very well, but I knew the rest of the people in the band, yeah. I've known them since they very first started, actually. In fact, I helped, somehow helped that band form in, 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 in one respect, because I introduced um, Baz, the guitarist, to the original drummer, Whale. And, um, yeah, so I was partly responsible in helping them get together, and that's many, many years ago, like 87 or 86 even, you know. So, yeah, it's very sad news. I don't know the story properly, but... Um, I just heard about it today, actually. Well, you know, after Cathedral ended, it was we were together for a long time. I mean, since 1990, the band was together. So it was like over 20 years, like 22, 23 years. Um, and I guess like spending any amount of time in this situation, any, you know, for that, for that, I mean, in a, being in a situation like a band like Cathedral and being like a serious band for over two decades is, is quite a long time. And um, I think within that period of time, we kind of achieved everything that we wanted to, really. I, and, you know, when the band ended, I didn't necessarily want to be in another band again. It wasn't my intention. I wasn't looking to be in another band or anything. Um, this situation with, with The Dead just came about because... Um, Tim Bagshaw, the bass player, stroke guitarist, he um, he lives in America these days. He lives in New Jersey, and he's lived there for quite some a few years with his wife, who's American. And um, he contacted me early last year, saying he was looking on forming a new band or doing something with uh, Mark Greening because they used to play together before in Ramesses and Electric Wizard and stuff. And he asked me, you know if Rise Above Records, which is my label, if we would be interested in releasing something, if it came about and something happened with the band. And I said, yeah, of course, I mean, I'd be interested in releasing something, just keep me updated and let me hear some stuff. And within a short space of time, Tim had been writing some material and he sent me over some uh, ideas for songs that he had. They just recorded on his four track at home in his bedroom or whatever with a drum machine and stuff. And uh, I instantly liked the material straight away. I thought it sounded killer, you know. I thought it sounded really kind of um, straight from the straight from the gut, really raw and um, f fresh, you know. When I say fresh, I don't mean to say it sounded like so much like really unusual, or original, or anything like that. Because I, I think you know the kind of music we play is kind of um, not necessarily striving to be that original. But I think it's the most important thing was it sounded fresh. I was like, wow, these songs sound really cool. So. Um, yeah, we'd definitely be interested in releasing something on Rise Above Records when you get it together. Uh, at that time, I wasn't even thinking that I was going to be involved in this in any other way, um, <coughs> other than releasing the record, maybe. Um, uh, so, yeah, anyway, la later that year, like, so October last year, I said to, Ma to Tim, why don't you come over to the UK and um, have a jam with Mark and then work out together all these songs that you've written and get them tight and then go into the studio and record them all so at least then you've got like a sketch plate for um, an album that it could be worked on I, initially you wanted to do an EP and I said well e EPs are a kind of redundant format these days so if you're going to record something record an album and with that in mind just record everything you've got and uh, we can build on it from there and I think you know I, I went down to the studio when they were recording it which was in Dorset where they both from originally and um, although I thought the material was great the recording didn't sound so hot because the studio wasn't that great I guess and they'd only spent a short time working on the songs as a unit so and at the same time they asked me if I wanted to join the band and I was kind of a bit hesitant because you know <coughs> running the label Rise Above Records is very much a full-time job you know and having left Cathedral um, with an aim of actually spending more time concentrating on Rise Above, it was kind of hard for me to say yes straight away, I want to be in this band, because uh, I had to think of all the responsibilities that that involved. Um, but as time went on, I kind of got more and more into the idea. And I said, look, if we're going to do this, um, let's just scrap these recordings you just did and start again from scratch and come over 
come back to the UK uh, in, in a few months time <clears throat> and start all over again just record everything again but record it properly so they came so Tim flew over again in March of this year and uh, him and Mark had a few more rehearsals and they went to a studio in London which we've recorded at in various and the labels released um, records from that studio and we've cathedral's last album was done there as well at organ studios and um yeah just recorded the backing tracks in a few days after a couple of rehearsals i think i rehearsed a couple of the songs like before we went into the studio and that, that was the crown of burning stars and i am your virus the rest i hadn't rehearsed at all and i i wrote all the lyrics to all of the songs really fast and um, recorded all the vocals in like two hours. First takes were just kept, and because um, we made a conscious effort, a conscious decision, so that, should I say, early on when I when I said um, I agreed to join the band, we but we all agreed amongst ourselves that we wanted to make it the most devastating and crushingly heavy record we could possibly make between ourselves, you know. And when you've got that as a focal point to aim towards nothing else really matters you don't want to get any you don't want to com complicate things by adding subtleties or adding all these different dimensions or going off in ver uh, various directions the main focal point was just to be direct and as heavy as possible you know and that made things a lot more easier and it made it a lot more easy to focus on how i wanted to do things in terms of the de delivery of the vocals for instance and how they we wanted uh, the drums to sound how he wanted the guitars to sound there everything had to be complete in its unity that it was going to be the most bombastic and heavy it could possibly be mm -hmm. so therefore you know i didn't have any major plans to join a band it just happened like that i just got asked to join and i thought well if i don't i'd kind of be stupid not to really uh, i think it was um i suppose in cathedral there was various um, opinions of the way the direction was going at, at different stages. Um, there were certain times when I was more adamant that the band needed to sound a certain way. And when I'd kind of done that, then I felt a bit like, well, I can't completely be always the guy that's saying the band's got to sound this way. So there were, you had to give leeway for everyone else involved. I think, luckily, with, with The Dead, I mean, I, you know, I'm very happy with everything Cathedral ever, ever did, but it's that's kind of history now so and it's it's there for people to discover or people who are already already aware of it it's just there you know with the dead there was no no kind of baggage there was there wasn't like previous records to draw from or uh, or to live up to or to follow on from or anything like that it was just a, it was a brand new idea so therefore i think you know everybody in the band wanted wanted had that goal to be the most brutal and heavy and punishing that we could possibly be so yeah in that respect it was more unified in the kind of end goal that we wanted to achieve. Yeah, I suppose, I mean, inside of me, I grew up listening to punk and hardcore, so I guess that spirit is still inside me, no matter how much I kind of go on and do different things. To me, that's the purest thing that's inside me, really, that, and, and being able to instinctively pull that out of me, it's just there, you know what I mean? It doesn't have to be forced or strained or anything like that that kind of that instinct is just there so and you know there was a definite decision not to spend too much time thinking about what we were doing mainly just to go purely from the gut and purely from like some instinctive notion of how to do things and, and luckily you know the music was kind of lent itself to that because it was it, it was quite straightforward and quite simplistic the riffs aren't too complicated and the structures aren't too complicated once you get used to them at least anyway and um, I mean, whether it's a record made, made by teenagers, I mean, I'm very happy that it's like a record that does sound so kind of raw and fresh and it's made by me who's like 47 years old, you know what I mean? I'm not going to lie about my age, what's the point in that, you know? I think it's just quite a cool thing for me to do, to feel that um, that was quite in, an instinctive record to make and feel comfortable doing so, you know? Not trying to be a teenager or anything like that, you know. But, you know, teenagers can try and be that heavy if they want. <laughs> I don't know, because I don't really observe the music business as such. I mean, I just do things with Rise Above the way we've always done them, really. There's never been, like, a, a business plan or a kind of master plan or anything like that. Again, you know, it's just like... We sign bands that we like 
which is quite rare because there aren't like millions of bands that we like. We're not a record label that churns out tons of releases every year just because we need to put out releases. We only put out releases we 100% believe in and um, we do it our own way the same way as we al always have. I think like other labels that are bigger than us have probably suffered more than us as a result of the way the music industry has changed um, because they've had a lot more to lose. We've kind of kept things, we've tried to keep, always tried to keep things at a manageable pace where each release gets um, the attention it deserves over a period of time as opposed to like putting out 10 releases every week just to see if one of them sticks. I mean, what's the point in that, you know? That's what a lot of other labels do just to get a cash flow going and, and that's all it is to them, you know? No, I'm not surprised by it. I think all power to them, you know. Um, hopefully, you know, they're achieving the goals that they, they wanted to, by now, the places they wanted to get to. I mean, the thing is, after we did their first Ghost album, it was quite clear that the band had, um, they had ideas that were kind of out of our reach in terms of being a small independent label. They wanted to go in a direction that was like a lot wider and a lot more open to um, go in higher places, I suppose, if you want to say higher places. They just wanted to become more popular and they had a vision of how to get there. And obviously um, that involved a lot of um, backing and a lot of finance and a lot of hardcore management and I guess you know after the first record they were approached by um, several bigger management companies and I suppose they saw through that a way of perhaps making their kind of dreams and goals come true but obviously uh, that also required like major label backing and you know after some negotiations and stuff we managed to come to an agreement where we, we let the band go and um, I wish them all the best. I think they're a great band and they deserve the success they have for sure. Yeah.